That'll be good uh, and profitable. Amen? All right. I want you to turn your Bible to 1 John chapter 4, please. All right. First John chapter 4. Verse number 1, we'll be taking off into a lot of different areas here of Scripture, but actually, you can actually, why don't you turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 10, or verse number 7. Turn there, and then I'll read this verse from 1 John. I want to talk to you today about the history of the counterfeit spiritual gifts right? Uh, from Rome to Charismania. Amen. And I want you to understand that there's a history with these false, these, these gifts, all right, these, the, the counterfeit of these gifts, there's a history that's involved with these. Uh, and you need to understand that it's not new. Like, right. it didn't just come out of nowhere that this charismatic movement just popped <laughs> up and they're teaching tongues and they're teaching. Just like, you know, perfect example is the lady on the street. Perfect example. The lady I met yesterday on the street that has a church that says, speak in tongues. And, and on her shirt it says, well, she's a member of a church. She said, speak in tongues is what her, church, what, what her shirt oh, said. Oh, wow. And she's out walking up to people and saying, if you were to die, do you know you're going to heaven? No? Okay, well, repeat after me. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. And I looked at her and I said, lady, you're making, you're making them twofold the child of hell. That's what you're doing. They don't even have any clue what you're... They, I, they don't even know they're a sinner. She goes, everybody knows they're a sinner. You know they don't. <laughs> Everybody's self righteous. Yep. yep. Right. They think they're they think they're okay. Yep. I'm not asked that publicly. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Right? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. I'm good. Now you can hear me. Anyway. But um so you know, she was a perfect example of that of of you know this prosperity or even this uh this charismatic doctrine of of tongue speaking, and I met her devil possessed pastor. Yep, the year before, and he, <laughs> he came up speaking tongues to me and got in my face and was like touching me. And I always want to touch you. Weirdos. Yeah, wonder why. Anyway, but that's what she did. That's what she did. That's it's on her shirt. Listen, you're going out to preach the gospel to people. Well, they're not preaching the gospel. Right. They're, they're going out preaching just saying tongues. prayers to people. And the first thing you have on your shirt, speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. <laughs> yeah. No, speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Yeah, telling speak in tongues. People telling people to speak in tongues. What does that tell you? Well, very clearly what it tells you is, is that these people have no clue what they're talking about. Right. The scriptures. Right. They've made all this up and they like their feelings. Yep. That's what they like. They like what it makes them feel like. And women like to do it because it gives them a sense of authority yeah. and power. And that's why that's they like me. Focus, that is their main focus. Yeah, it is their main focus. She had it right on her shirt. The whole ball game. That's it. Like All right. Game. So <laughs> this is not a new phenomenon, though it isn't. All through the centuries, we have seen <laughs> false prophets and signs and lying wonders. In 1 John chapter 4, verse number 1, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now, then turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 7, and we see this, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Right. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Yeah. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Amen. What do they want? They want a sign. They want a wonder. Yep. Right? They don't love the truth. Because they don't love the truth. That's right. right. And for this cause, God shall send them what? Strong delusion. Yep. What did that lady have yesterday? Strong delusion. Right. right. Wicked. Yeah, wicked. That they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Right. They love it. Yeah, they do. They love it. You know, the Bible talks about many signs and lying wonders before our eyes, showing us that we are truly living in the end times, a time of confusion in every false way. 
Yep. It's just it's a time of that right now. The you know we see a we see the, we should we see the history though. There's a history of these temporal these temporary spiritual gifts being perverted and the counterfeit being represented right. by down through the ages. It's it's just it's shocking, but it's not new. There's a right. history that goes through with this, and it's a history of witchcraft is what it is actually. It's a history of of these signs and lying wonders that are from Satan and the power of Satan. You cannot, if you, if one studies history through with this topic, what you will find out is the people that push these spiritual gifts, these temporary gifts, as for our time, were into witchcraft. Yeah. They were in, they were into witchcraft. He says, the charismatic movement full of witchcraft? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely is. Amen. Yeah. You look at them flipping around and flopping around on the floor right. like they're on fire. That Heidi Baker, the person, fire, fire, fire. They're calling down fire from heaven. <laughs> do, you, you know, do you know what fire they're calling down? Right. Yeah. That's right. Judgment. Yep. Dan, yeah, Kundalini spirit. Damnation and judgment is what they're, what they're actually crying out. Right. And they're being consumed. All right, so number one, the Bible says these temporary gifts would cease. Yep. We talked about that before. Say, do you believe that some of these sign gifts ceased? Yes, I do, because Paul said these gifts would cease. Yeah, right. So turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I just want to remind you of this. Verse number 8. We've already talked about speaking in tongues, that it would cease, that the modern-day tongues movement has nothing to do with biblical tongues that were spoken in the Scriptures. We covered that on, on uh, Wednesday. But 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 8 says, Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fall, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Right. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Amen. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man... I put away childish things. Right. Those first few gifts were childish to lead up to perfection. Right? right? They were there for a sign, for a time, a temporary gift. And guess what? They were to end. Why? Because you grow up. You have the Word of God. Now I don't need it anymore. Right. I don't need that, which is temporary. Amen. I have a more sure word of prophecy. Amen. Not what comes from somebody's <laughs> mouth, but a more sure word of prophecy. Amen. Peter said it was a more sure word of prophecy. Even God spoke from heaven, he said, but he gave us his word as a more sure word of prophecy. Right. He said to take heed to it. Amen. 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 For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as, I, as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. These gifts were temporary signs to Israel to show the sealing of the apostles' apostleship and the authority and God's new work of a local New Testament church. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 11, I am become a fool in glory. You have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you, for in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. What did he say? Look at this. This is what the signs were for right here. Check this out. Verse number 12. Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you. Yep. What are the signs of an apostle? The gifts. Those yep. gifts, those sign gifts, the healing gifts, yeah, the miracles, the right? Right. Yep. Casting out devils, all of those different things that were there at the time that we see Paul was doing. Give it the speaking in tongues to other people. Right? To other, you know, so people could see that, that that gift was given. How about the miracle that Paul, when he shook off that serpent out of his hand, what was that to show them? That was a sign to show them. Yep. Right. Right. right? These were the sign gifts for a purpose. And when the canon of Scripture was closed with John receiving the final revelation, we needed no more sign gifts. Amen. They weren't necessary anymore. Now, we are going to see some, some signs and wonders happen when the Antichrist... Why? Because God... Is doing something new. When that takes place, when that when that happens during that time of tribulation, when the Antichrist shows up, those are all signs. Why? Because God is doing something different. He is doing something. Yep. 
supernaturally he is doing something so he's going to show you the signs in the sky the sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light the stars shall fall from heaven why is he doing that to show you that i am doing something now different <laughs> right right yeah because it's not normal you don't walk out and the blood's not turned to moon, or the moon's not turned to blood right yeah the darkness isn't there right like that the stars are are fall from heaven like that why? Because it's a change that God is doing. That's why those sign gifts and those other gifts and the and the wonders are given. Right. That's it. Not for this time. We don't need them for right now. Right. We have everything we need in the Word of God. Amen. By the way, to use the Word of God to warn us as our book to understand when we do see those signs, there's not gonna there's not gonna be an opportunity uh, for, for God's people when they see those signs. That they're going to be like, oh no, what's going on? The Bible's not true. No. Right. Oh, we this prophet is speaking these these things, so I have to listen to him. No. What did Jesus say? When a prophet comes, I go not after them. Don't follow them. That's not right. Christ. Yeah. What did he say? That's not Christ. And what did he give us to know that's not Christ? That's did he give us, are we supposed to wait for a prophet? No. Are we supposed to wait for somebody else? No. Right he here. gave us this book. And he said, Amen. listen, they're going to come in my name. And they're going to say they're of me. But I've given you this book so you understand that those are lying are signs and lying wonders. Right. That's right. not the God of the Bible. Amen. That's not Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is in this book and hey. found in this book. Amen. Right. That's, right. that's how you'll know when you see those signs what's going on. Right. This is the rule, not some prophet speaking from his mouth, right. something that is contrary to this book. Amen. Amen. That's the problem. Everybody wants something else other than this book. Right. 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 Yep. Why? Because this book is accountability, that's why. Right. Yep. And you're accountable to it. Right. Yep. I'm going to tell you what, as a man, your little rebellious heart doesn't like that accountability. That's right. That's right. Because by nature, we're rebellious. Right. Oh, yeah. right. Amen. Amen. Right. We are absolutely rebellious by nature. That's right. We all, the Bible says we've all gone astray. That's right. 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 Everyone has turned his own way, right? right. Yeah. So you want that other sign, that other wonder. You know what? God's going to give them what they want. Yep. Yep. Delusion. God, you want it, you're going to get it. Because you would not believe the love of the truth that you might be saved. So what you want is what you're going to get. You're going to get that strong delusion. You're going to get those lies and lines or those uh, uh, signs and lying wonders. You're going to get those. By the way, the signs are true. But there are some lying wonders. Right? Because God said about the signs that they're going to happen. God will give you the desire of your heart. That's right. He's going to give them what they want. Yeah. You want the Antichrist? You want the Superman? You've been waiting for the Superman? You want you want that you, you want that man to come up? You want him to come up? You want that perfect man? You want to attain godhood? I'll give you over to your own delusion. That's right. Yep. I'll give you what you want. Yep. Listen, folks, that's what it's all about. That's what this history of perversion is about. These charismatics are the same as any other cult out there. They're the same as any other any other uh, esoteric religion out there. They are bringing on the Antichrist. Right. Right. They're going to be the yep. first ones to step in line with yep. him when he comes. Right, yep. right up. They're going to be the first ones to sell you down the river, yes, too. Yes, they right. will. That's, that's right. right. All in the name of their false Christ. That's right. That's right. Yep. Amen. See, that's why he said, many shall come in my name. Right. There's more than one understanding of that. Yep. There's, yeah, they're going to come in, but they're also going to come in my name preaching somebody else to you. Right. right. They're going to preach another Christ to you, but they're going to do it in my name. That's right. And those that don't have the Holy Ghost are going to be fooled. Right. Those that have the Holy Spirit are not going to be fooled. Why? Because my sheep hear my voice. Amen. Right. I know them and they follow me. Amen. Not a stranger. Not a, str- a voice of a stranger they won't hear. That's right. Yeah. Right? They know it. Whoa, that's not God. Right. Yeah, amen. Right. Kind of like when you hear NIV and you're like, well, that's not the Bible. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep. That amen. Isn't the Bible. That's right. Right. Amen. Right. You're so narrow minded. I know. Oh, amen. It's good. It's amen. called a narrow way. Yeah, yeah. You should look into it. <laughs> right. Revelation chapter 22, verse number 18, please. This is a warning. Yes, it is. This is a warning against all of these charismatics today, all these false prophets today that go out and they give these 
word of knowledge, these extra prophecies, yep. all these other things that are contrary to the word. They're forth telling. Right. Right. They say, well, I could tell this guy told me on the street. I told you about it last time. He said, he said, you know, I, I have the gift of foretelling. You mean you're a fortune teller? Yeah. He's a diviner. You mean you're a witch? Yeah. Right? <laughs> right? Yep. Yeah. You got a perverse spirit that's helping you do something? Uh oh. Yeah. Huh? Right. Wonder what that is. Revelation 22, right. verse number 18. We had the final revelation of God here. It says that he wanted us to have. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. That's right. Amen. Right. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Right. Now, why did he? Why was he so specific? Because John was the last prophet. That's why John was the last apostle right. to live. Amen. John was going to die. Amen. And God gave him that Amen. gift. He still had those visions and the foreknowledge and everything from God that he needed to the foretelling or whatever, the word of knowledge, everything that he needed to finish the canon of Scripture. Amen. Amen. Once that was given, once that was finished, that final revelation was finished. Close right. the book. It's closed. Amen. Yeah. It's sealed. Yeah. Right. right. You can't add to it, and you can't take away from it. Right. Right. Amen. You don't have the authority to do that. So when you try to give an extra biblical prophecy, these tongue speakers try to give that, and these charismatics, and, and, and these Pentecostals, and they try to give something when it's contrary to the word of God, let it be a curse. Right, right, right. Like, like I told that charismatic, you're not my, you're not, you're not my brother in Christ. You're right. not my sister in Christ. You're right. a false prophet. Right. Amen. Let it be a curse. Right. Amen. You can't play games with these people. Nope. Right? Doctrines because you're dealing with devils yep. that are leading those people. They have another spirit. I don't care how many times they sing, Jesus loves me. Right. I don't care how many times they wave right. wave their arms in the air so much that they start flying. I don't care if they take <laughs> off on their broom and fly like Mary Poppins. I don't care, okay? They are accursed. Amen. Right. And they don't listen to reason. Right. And they want to sit around and argue with you because they want to subvert other people around right. you. Right, yep. Because they're of a perverse spirit and they're delusional. They don't care about this book. No. And they were con. I showed that lady. I gave that lady four or five verses where she was wrong. Four or five didn't matter. Nope. She had her feelings. That's all that mattered was her feelings. That's it. They don't want the Bible. It's her feelings. This this sealed the revelation. There was no need for any more gifts. Those temporary gifts, the word of God was complete. Right. Those three temporary gifts were in right there together. Now, Second Peter chapter one, verse number eighteen. Now look at this. This is a second witness to this. Of this truth, of these temporary gifts, and of God speaking that way, and of that supernatural work. Yep. Amen. Second Peter chapter one, verse number eighteen. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. What voice? The voice of God. Yeah, right. son. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Yeah. Right? Right. Hear ye him. Yeah. What was going on there? Well, you had the law represented. You had Moses there. Yeah. You had the prophets represented Elijah there. And then you had Christ. Yeah. The grace of right. God represented right there. Amen. And then what did you have? The voice from heaven. What was he doing? Bearing witness. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Bearing witness to the superiority of Jesus Christ. Amen. Over all, above all. Amen. Because they were talking about, hey, should we build? We should build a tabernacle. Yeah, to him. We should build a tabernacle. We should. No, you shouldn't. Yeah, hear ye him. Yeah, he said, hear ye him. Amen. We know Moses is here. The law is right here. The prophets are right here. But Jesus Christ, my Son, is right here. Amen. Amen. Hear ye him. That's good. Amen. That's good. Now that's powerful. And if we stop there, that would be amazing. That's amazing in itself. But keep going. Because what does he say? He says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Right. Than even hearing a voice. Yeah. Yep. Listen to me, because you hear a lot of people say, well, I heard God told me to do this, and I hear his voice audibly. He told me to do this. The Spirit told me to do this. What Spirit told you to do that? 
Right. What what spirit told you to do that? Not the spirit of God. That's right. What spirit told you to act contrary to this spirit? Right. To the spirit of prophecy, Amen. which is the testimony of Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. That's the spirit of prophecy. Jesus Christ, come in the right. flesh. Amen. Right. 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 Amen. All right. We have also more sure word of prophecy, wherein do you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Amen. Right. This is the more sure word of prophecy. Amen. That's right. Amen. Because why? What did he say? Because whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Right. That's what he said. But what won't fail? That's the word of God that abides forever. Amen. Right? It doesn't right. fail. Nope. A lot of failing prophecies. Now. A lot of failing prophecies out there. That's right. That's right. Until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Amen. Wait, they seem to have a lot of private interpretations, oh, yeah. the charismatics do, don't they? For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So you see, the voices, the visions, and the words of knowledge that were special revelations of God and the tongues, they would cease. Right. And that's why I'm a secessionist. Secessionist, sorry, say that wrong. You know what I mean. Secessionist. Thank you. Yeah, that we believe those temporary gifts. Right. Done away. Done away. Yeah. Done away. That's been They're the, over. That's been the orthodox doctrine they for cease. the last right. 1500 they years. They cease. Yeah. Exactly. It has been the orthodox doctrine. And I'm going to show that. Right. Actually, I'm going to go into the history of that. Yep. I'm starting with the word of God because that's our authority. Amen. Then I'm going to get into history and I'm going to Amen. show you what men of God said through history. That's right. About this very topic. Yep. Men that were used mightily of God. Amen. Amen. Can't be used beyond the of God. Right. <laughs> right. Now, God can supernaturally do what he wants. But the problem is that the charismatics believe that we must prove that the gifts have ceased. Yeah. But I say they must prove that their gifts are the ones found in the Scripture. Right. Amen. Amen. And they're not. Nope. Right. They don't hold up to any scrutiny. Nope. To biblical scrutiny, they don't hold up. There are really two arguments. Did the sign gifts cease? And are the sign gifts that are practiced today legitimate? Right. Well, I believe, yes, they ceased. And number two, no, these are not legitimate gifts. Amen. Right? They're not. And I do believe that the devils can give, mimic these or counterfeit these gifts. Right. And I'm going to show you how in through history, they did. Oh, yeah. They did. And they're going to do it again. Right. They're going to do the same thing again. Is not the Antichrist, the false prophet, going to call down fire from heaven? Yeah. Right? Remember, Baal couldn't do it, right? But Elijah did it. Yeah. So as a, as a sign and a lying wonder... It's going to happen again. Right. right. For a reason. Right? That's right. Anyway, so we're going to show next through history God, that the God free holy men that back up this scriptural teaching that the gifts have ceased, that the sign gifts are more. This makes a lot of charismatics and Pentecostals upset. Right. When they hear this, they get, they get very upset with that. It is okay. But they, they get upset. And the reason they get upset is because they like the way they feel when they do that, which I can't figure out, to be honest with you. Is the Bible boring to them? Maybe? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess studying the scriptures is very boring to them, and they need to have, you know, their tongues flapping spice and all this other stuff going. On. Yeah, it's so spice it up a little bit, right? Spice it up. <laughs> all right. So number two, I want to go through church leaders in the past, different church leaders, and I'm not saying they're Baptists because they weren't, but uh, yeah. that who rejected the sign gifts being for today. Mm -hmm. They rejected John Chrysostom. Chrysostom. Uh, 347 to 40780. Concerning the spiritual gifts of 1 Corinthians. Why is that cutting out? All right, that's weird. Uh, for, is that a sign? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> that's a lying wonder. Uh, it's a lying wonder. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 through 14, he said this. His, his whole place is very obscure, but the obscurity is produced by our ignorance of the facts referred to and by the fact that they ceased being such as then used to occur, but now no longer take place. He said, we don't understand everything around those gifts because they no longer happen. Right. Because they're not needed any longer. They were meant for a time, and that was it. Augustine, which we know is a heretic. Right. But I, but I want you to understand even a heretic understood this. Right. He said this, if the gift of tongues was a sign appropriate to that era, 
It was meant to announce the coming of the Holy Spirit on people of all tongues to demonstrate that the gospel was to be announced to every language on earth. It's, it's happened to announce something. Right. Then disappeared. Right. Yep. So even he understood that. Yep. Even he understood that, no, it's, it's gone. Yep. It was meant for a time. There was a purpose for it. Right. And then it was over. John Calvin said this, the gift of healing, like the rest of the miracles, which the Lord which the Lord will to be brought forth for a time, has vanished away in order to make the preaching of the gospel marvelous forever. Amen. Well, he was right about that's that. A good, that's a good quote. That is a good yeah. quote. That's right. Because he was right about that. Yep. That the gospel is the focus. Now, what do we know and what have we seen among charismatics? Tongues and miracles yep. become the focus, and yep. what doesn't? The gospel. The gospel. That's right. Right. They don't know the gospel. Right. They don't preach the gospel. Nope. They preach the gifts. John Calvin understood that, that if you, with those gifts, they would be a snare to people trying to practice those which are gone, and the gospel would cease to be the focus. Right. But what did Paul say? Paul said that he came to preach the gospel of the Amen. Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. That's what he said. He didn't come to baptize. He didn't come. To, he came to preach the gospel. Yep. That's what he came for. Amen. Or is it what God sent him for? Ordained him to. How about John Owen? Some of you don't know who that is. Yeah. All right. You know who that is. Yeah. You studied some of this. You know who that is. I was just thinking of the way Nate says Owen sometimes, so it just made me laugh. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Owen. But uh, John. John Owen from he wrote a lot of books. In fact, I've, yeah. I've got a. He's got a series that he, that he wrote, a commentary set on Hebrews. Yeah. Eight volumes. Guy's bra- a brain, he was a brainiac, <laughs> oh, man. My goodness, that man. I mean, he just wrote and wrote and wrote. They didn't have a television. Yeah. Right? Right. They didn't have any distractions. Like, they, they didn't get the distractions. With, What's that? What they do without TV? They wrote books. <laughs> and a lot of them. They studied the Bible. Amen. Amen. Yep. This guy really wrote a lot. Yeah. All right? He, that was just his work. His works are huge. His works are like 16 volumes. Yep. Wow. They're about 500 pages each. I've got just the <laughs> Hebrews ones that he, that he did. But he was like an amazing linguist. I mean, he understood languages. He understood a lot yep. of things at a young age. He was very, yeah. just like, he was a doctor. I was a genius, like, man. He was a genius, yeah. absolutely. I don't agree with all his doctrine. I'm just saying that right. the truth is the truth. That's what he was. Yeah. All right. He said this. Gifts which in their own nature exceed the whole power of all our faculties that dispensation of the Spirit is long since ceased, and where it is now pretended unto by any, it may justly be suspected as an enthusiastic delusion. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's from his works, volume 4, page 518. That's right. Wow. Thomas Watson, who was another brilliant man that studied the Scripture. I mean, we have a lot of books from Thomas Watson. He wrote a ton of books. He was a Puritan as well, and I know we don't agree with Puritan theology, Reformed theology, but he had a lot of truth to the gospel and everything else. But this... He wrote a ton. I mean, I've got like I don't know, a ton of his books. But anyway, he wrote a lot of books, and he says this. And he studied the Bible, the scriptures. He was a pastor. He said this. Sure, there is as much need of ordination now as in Christ's time and in the time of the apostles. There being then extraordinary gifts in the church, which are now ceased. Right. <laughs> yeah, laying on of hands is important. Ordination is important. He says that those gifts right. have ceased. Right. Right. Ceased. That's right. Yeah. Matthew Henry said this, everybody's, if you've ever read any books before at all, you've probably at least come across Matthew Henry's writings oh, yeah. uh, of, of a lot, and he was a brilliant man in himself, he was wrong about baptism, obviously, but he was a brilliant man in writing and understanding scripture, he says this, speaking of the gift, the gifts of tongues, he said, these and other gifts of prophecy, being a sign, have long since ceased and been laid aside, and we have no encouragement to expect the revival of them. But on the contrary, are directed to call the scriptures the more sure word of prophecy, more sure than voices from heaven, and to them we are directed to take heed, to search them and to hold them fast. Amen. Amen. That's on his uh, preface to his exposition of the Old Testament, New Testament, page 8, page 7. So anyway, men that were by the use of God understood that all these gifts have ceased. All right, now we're going to move on to Jonathan Edwards. Yep. Jonathan Edwards, part of the Great Awakening. Uh, the New Lights, right, preached all over America at the time and won many souls to Christ uh, through his, his preaching of God's Word and through the power of the Holy Ghost. If, if any charismatic tries to deny that Jonathan Edwards and George Whitfield had the power of the Holy Ghost on them, 
Yep. They are being foolish yep. because the power That's was right. very evident that yep. God used Amen. them mightily and did a mighty work through them and used them for his, for his purpose. Um, you know, we respect men like Jonathan Edwards and George Whitfield Baptist do because of the separate Baptists that were influenced by them. Yep. They got saved, but then they went on to find a more perfect way. Yep. Amen. Amen. And, uh, that's right. Amen. So Jonathan Edwards from 1703 to 1758, he didn't live very long, did he? Most of them but they were spent for the Lord. Yep. They spent their life and they just died. Right. He said this, of the extraordinary gifts they were given in order to the founding and establishing of, of the church in the world. But since the canon of Scripture has been completed and the Christian church is fully church fully founded and established, these extraordinary gifts have ceased. Right. That was in his works on charity and its fruits. Right. George Whitfield said this. We all know who George Whitfield is. All right, or we should know. If you don't know, we're going to start looking into it. The miraculous gifts conferred on the primitive church have long ceased. The Great Awakening under Whitfield and Edwards saw a thousand saved in revival sweep through the country and led to the greatest church planting revival ever. Amen. Right? You know, power of God. Nobody could deny that. I mean, when they preached, yep. men were saved and yep. fell under conviction and everything else. James Buchanan, he said this. That's right, because the gospel, not the tongues or the gifts or right. anything else like that. It was the gospel being preached. Yep. Amen. And they slew them with the law. Yeah. Oh, you're not yeah. supposed to do that. Yeah, you don't do that. But anyway, <laughs> James Buchanan, the miraculous gifts of the Spirit have long since been withdrawn. They were used for a temporary purpose. Purpose, the office and work of the Holy Spirit. Right. Page, oh, I have that book. Page thirty-four. I just remember that. Uh, I couldn't figure out where I remember that guy's name from. Robert Dabney. You've heard of him? Dabney's theology. Has anybody ever heard of him? Vaguely. Okay. After the early church had been established, the same necessity for supernatural signs now no longer existed. And God, who is never wasteful in his expedience, withdrew them. Miracles, if they became ordinary, would cease to be miracles and would be referred to by men to customary law. He called it a blunder. Right. Discussions of evangelical theology he called it a blunder of the gifts. You know, just a, a, a pre prelazy of blunder, he called it. So what he's saying is if they weren't extraordinary, they then it would be no big deal. If it was common that everybody used them, and then it was common that everybody right. had these, then it wouldn't have been an extraordinary right. thing to be yeah. written about, because it's just standard. Right. Makes right? Sense. Charles Spurgeon, speaking of the office of the apostles, he said this, an office which necessarily died out, and properly so, because the miraculous power also is withdrawn. Those, remember, remember he said about those signs and wonders, right? Yeah. The, the signs truly are the signs of an apostle. Paul said yeah. that he had that were wrought among you. Right. Right? Yeah. There were certain signs that accompanied apostles. By the way, that's where you go when you go back to Mark and you say this, if by the, the, when they're followed, right. these signs, you know what I mean, that these signs shall follow them. Yeah. Who is he talking to? The apostles. Right. right. He was talking to the apostles. Right? Right. Somebody said, well, what about the, you know, casting out devils? We do that by prayer. Right. right. Amen. It's not quite the same. Yeah, by prayer and fasting, he said. But it's not quite the same as it was in their time. Right. Not quite the same. It's a little different. Right? Because we have the Holy Ghost sealed in us. Yep. Right? That's right. And then we have all those. Now, we have the Word of God now. Amen. That is used, you know, and, and everything like that. So, still part. Still people are devil-possessed. Still problems. Still the power of God to, do, to deal with that. But it's different than those signs that they were... Benjamin Warfield, he was a defender of, of the faith, you know, defender of... Uh, B.B. Warfield. Yep, yep, B.B. Warfield, yep. B.B. B.B., yep. These gifts were distinctly, distinctively the authentication, the authentication of the apostles. They were, uh, they were part of the credentials of the apostles as the authoritative agents of God in founding of his church. Their, functions, their function thus confirmed them distinctly, distinctively to the apostolic church, and they necessarily... Passed away with it. Yeah, they had to. He called it counterfeit miracles, by the way. Yeah. Uh oh. That's what it is. Yeah, it is counterfeit miracles. Yeah. That's right. So these were some of the greatest leaders ever in churches. While I don't agree with them all doctrinally, it's very hard to deny the fact that they all agreed that the sign gifts were only temporary and served a purpose for unbelieving Israel to see that God was doing a work and saving Gentiles and building churches. Right. It was over. 
A good admonition for me to give to the charismatic nonsense is grow up and stop playing childish games. Right? Amen. That's what they're doing. <laughs> yep. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Right. Right? Stop playing games. Start studying the Bible. That's what grown-ups do. Right. Amen. Right. Take out the training wheels. Right. Take out the training wheels. Stop living in fantasy land. Children are the ones that they have a big imagination and everything else. But the Bible says casting down imaginations in every high. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. So. All right. So next, number three, from Rome to modern-day charismania. Uh-oh. Yeah. You cannot, and I'm not even going to deal with the modern-day, really, movement of charismatics in Rome. I just want to show you that Rome always held those charismatic That's counterfeit radio, signs. Yeah. What's that? yeah, that'll be a radio show because I don't have time to do it up here. It takes a long time. But because there's a lot, it just layer on layer on layer. But this just gives you a general overview of what took place, okay? Yep. There's going to be some examples through history of these charismatic counterfeit gifts being practiced and who did them and what they were connected to. Right. And I think it's important for you to understand this movement just didn't rise up and then, boom, here we go. Oh, it's a, they call it the latter day reign or something. And then oh, yeah, this is the latter day reign of, of gifts and everything else. No, it's not. It, they've been doing it for a long time. Yep. But Rome did start that movement. Yep. Rome was a part of that, and Rome controls the charismatic movement today. Yep. And I, I won't get into that very deeply, but just to say to you that if you look at Benny Hinn and Paula White, yep. where were they caught at? Rome. In Rome, <laughs> by the Vatican, shacking up. Yep. What were they doing in Rome? Oh, I do. Know. Yeah. I know what Benny was there for. Right. Yep. They were doing as the Romans. Exactly. Yeah. So what were the what were the other ones? What are, what is Kenneth Copeland and all these other charismatic oh, leaders yeah. doing with the Pope? Having an audience with the Pope, giving a conversation to the Pope. Why would you guys be doing that? Why are you so comfortable to talk? Yeah. Because I don't know, he's the head of the mysteries. The Reformation right, yeah. is over. Right? Yeah. But <laughs> Catherine Col- Catherine Coleman, oh, that's right. Yeah. So we're not even gonna get oh. into today because it's just there's so much to get into with that. She's a part of the modern day movement of charismatics. That lady was obviously witch, the man. mother of it. She was but why did she meet with the Pope? Why do they why are they all meet because you know, when you when you want to know about witchcraft and you want to have the most powerful witchcraft, just talk to Helena Blavatsky, right? right? She understood that. Yep. She understood who held the power of that. That's right. She was she was scared of the Jesuits and the Pope. Yeah. Why? Because she knew they had the they had the real power. Yep. yep. She was mad about it. Right? She was mad about it. <laughs> Yep. Because she knew, as an occultist, she knew who the top occultist was. Yep. And then she had two Jesuits meet her and come knocking on her door before she's ready to write a book about about the Pope and everything, and about, about Catholicism, about spiritual, you know, the spirit world, all this stuff. Then these two Jesuits come and see her. What's that about? The craft. Well, I think we know what it's about. It's yeah. about the craft. That's right. That's what it's about. Okay, so you've got to be able to connect the dots and understand this is too easy. I mean, it's not even a conspiracy. Right. It's just too simple. Wait. But I want to give you some of the history of it. You say, why does this matter to me? It should matter to you. Right. You should understand that all these people out there that are doing these false signs and they are these signs and lying wonders and they're, they're, that they're devil-possessed, first of all, a lot of them are, yep. that they're deceived and under strong delusion and quit calling them your brother and preach the gospel to them because they're lost. They need to be saved. Right. Amen. That's right. And for you to understand where this movement comes from and where it's leading, it's leading strictly to Antichrist. Yep, yep. That's right. It's re- leading to the rising. L- listen, the Great Schism is ended. That's what they said. That's what they said. Yep. Who knows what the Great Schism is? Anybody know what the Great Schism yes, is? Yes, I do. Right? What's that? You know what the, the Great Schism is? The split of the Greek Orthodox. Yeah, the Greek the Orthodox. That's right. Yep. The Orthodox Church coming home to Rome, right? Yep. They're coming back to Rome. Yep. All the... the, the that one heretic, or that one little yeah. Lutheran, well, he was actually a Catholic. He's actually a Catholic. Tony. Tony Boy. Uh, yeah, uh, to, yeah. Tony Palmer. Tony Palmer was actually a Catholic, yeah, okay? An Angelic yeah. and priest, yeah. And, the, and he was friends with uh, Francis. Francis! He, he was friends with office. Francis, okay? And, yep. yeah, he was friends with Francis before yep. Fran- Francis became Pope. Right. Right? Yep. You think it yeah, no, that's that's all the same. It's yep. all the same. It's the all connected. Is over. No, the great. I I realize the great schism is orthodox. It's yep. the orthodox church coming home to Rome, but it's all the same plan for 2017. Yep. Right. It's all the same plan to end it all. Yep. The Reformation is over. They said yep. that was for the that was for the uh, charismatics. That was for all of them. Right. The Reformation for Protestants. 
But they had to get the Greek Orthodox Church. They had to get them yeah. on board, too, with it. So it's all the same movement. The yeah. Charismatics, the Greek Orthodox, all of them. Protestants. They want them all to come together. Right. The Pope's going to release his documents for that coming up soon. Nope. Yeah, the Lutherans. That's what it's about. Right. The Lutherans, the Lutherans have already signed. They've already signed. Forces of them have signed an agreement. That's that they are not. Right. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> True. It is a bunch of dumb. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so all of these things are happening right now. But it's the same mystery of iniquity that has already been working. Right. It's the same spirit of Babylon. Right. One world religion. They're just gonna they're just starting to take the labels off. Yep. We can take off the you know the the product the, the protest is over. So just take the layer off. We're all just the church. Oh, Right. We're all just the church, right? That's what they want to say. We're all just one big universal visible church. Mm. Right? We are. Same spirit. That's what the charismatic that's what this the contemporary Christian music is all about. Yep. That's what the charismatic movement is all about. That's what it's all about. A one world church. Right, yep. But they have to have a spirit behind it. Amen. And here's the spirit. Right. Antichrist. Yeah. So the prominent example of tongue speaking in the century. Uh, after the apostles is some of the Montanists. Yeah. Some of the Montanists, all right? And one of the leaders, Montanists, lived in, in Asia Minor in the last half of the second century. He claimed that he was the mouthpiece of the Holy Spirit for new revelations. Uh -oh. And he and several associates called themselves prophets. Two of them, Priscilla and Maximilla, were women. Oh, no. Montanists and his fellow prophets are said to have spoken in ecstatic and frenzied trance-like state when giving their alleged prophecies. The following is a description of that. The prophet claimed to fall into a trance of ecstatic transport in which his own self-consciousness ceased and his own mind was altogether passive while God took entire possession of him and spoke through him. What is that? Yeah, it sounds like a Sufis. It's possession. Passiveness. When does God ever tell us in the Bible to be passive in our worship to God right. or in, in, in studying the scriptures? Never. What's that? What's that? It's satanic. That's right. It is. A passive mind. Yeah. That's why I have a series on hold that I was going to preach on psychology. I've got it there that I've, you know, about mind control, about mind manipulation, about hypnotism, about all those things. I, I just kind of left it alone for a while. But I call it, you know, hypnosis, the raping of your mind. Yep. I call them mind rapers. Psychologists, mind psych rapers. they're mind rapers. Yep. That's what I call it. They are. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm going to preach that sometime. That will make a lot of friends. Yeah. As always. Yep. As always. Yeah. <laughs> they spoke as if they were the direct mouthpieces of God. Montanus would say things such as, I am the Father, the Word, and the Parcelet. Wow. Oh, wow. Apparently, sorry. I, I am the Lord God Omnipotent who have descended into man. Wow. Even the women would speak as if they were Christ. Wow. 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 This is that spirit. Yep. Tongues. Here's where it comes. It didn't, it didn't. These people tried to mimic these gifts. The next time we see tongue speaking and signs and wonders operating in church histories in the lives of some of the Roman Catholic saints. In parentheses. Yep. Vineyard pastor James Ryle, in his attempt to uh, you know, examine the revelation through dreams and visions after the days of the apostles, is forced to dig through the strange record of Roman Catholic fathers and, and saints and mystics. Yep. He names false teachers such as Jerome, Thomas Aquinas, St. Benedict, even St. Nicholas. Santa? No, oh, no. Santa spoke in tongues? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Makes sense. Oh, you got to draw the line there. Not Dude, Santa. Santa. Yeah. Well, he punched Arius, so he's cool. Santa punched Arius in the yeah. face <laughs> while speaking in tongues. That's, that's a, that's a myth. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new song we'll, we'll sing to people next year during Christmas time. Isn't it? Okay. Don't worry. It'll come around soon enough. You'll get to hear some more Christmas sermons. Yeah. Right? <laughs> is the season. <laughs> the best there is. Vineyard founder John Wimber and, the Pen and Pentecostal historian Vincent Sinan traced their roots through the same strange waters. Aren't you amazed that like Kirk Cameron and all these and the Charismatics and all these people, they trace their roots through Rome. Right. All of them are like, yeah, these, these saints, they did this, they celebrated this. First of all, they weren't saved. They were Catholic. They didn't. Yeah. They didn't believe the Word of God. They weren't born again. They didn't follow the Scriptures at all. Why do you? Why do you claim that heritage? 
because that is your heritage. In his book, Power Evangelism, Signs and Wonders Today, Wimber mentioned the following Catholic saints in a positive light. Pope Gregory the Great, oh, wow. St. Francis, St. Dominic, St. Benedict, and Ignatius of Loyola. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, why would he mention that Jesuit? No way. The Jesuit general. The general. Why would he do that? <laughs> Consider the Catholic saints that allegedly spoke in tongues and performed miracles <laughs> that are cited by Pentecostals and Charismatics as their forerunners. <laughs> what the Bible says, as, as we man. said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any of the gospel that you have you received, let it be a curse. Right, right. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any of the gospel, so is the gospel of Rome and the gifts of Rome what we would accept? No. Not even close. Well, this is where you find those gifts, those counterfeit gifts. Wicked. Saint Benedict of Nursia, 487, called the father of the Western monks, was one of the founders of Catholic monasticism with its unscriptural and unholy doctrine that celibacy is preferred to marriage. According to Catholic Encyclopedia, Benedict did many miracles, gave prophecies, and even astrally projected oh, wow. his spirit so that he accompanied monks wow. on their journeys. you got to be Sorcerer. kidding me, man. <laughs> well, who do you think were the head of the mysteries during the Dark what? Ages? They were the top-level sorcerers, the popes were. Yep. Wow. The yeah. bishops and the popes were yep. the top-level sorcerers right. through all of it. I didn't, you didn't know that, did you? No. Because it's covered, and nobody wants to talk about it. Right. They practice alchemy every wow. morning. Yes, they did. Yeah. And nobody wants to talk about it. They don't <laughs> want to tell you that. Why? Because there's this, like, soft approach to Rome today. Yeah. I mean, Bath Baptists are so absolutely pathetic today, it makes right. me sick. Yeah. Yeah. They're so, they don't even tell, We don't want to offend anybody that might be listening to our sermon. So if we talk about Rome, they'll shut us off and won't listen. Really? Yeah. I would think they would love for the fact that you told them the truth. Hey, right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah, if they want the truth. If they do, it's biblical love. I mean, you got these. Why does anybody know that these Catholic, these Catholic fathers and priests and popes are astral projecting? Right. Think about this for a minute. You have these people. They're admitting it. <laughs> they are witches. <laughs> yep. It's crazy. And much worse than that. Oh yeah. And, oh yeah. I'm not oh, done yeah. yet. Much worse. All right, so anyway, his first miracle was alleged to have been the healing of an earthenware sieve that his nurse had broken. It is said that on, a, on one occasion when some monks tried to poison Benedict, the cup miraculously shattered as he as made the sign of the cross over the vessel prior to raising it to his lips. Wow, that is sick. See, I actually believe it, though. Yeah. Witchcraft. Everybody tries yeah. to say that, oh, all these they were lying about all this stuff. No. Rome's just nope. lying. No, that's because you don't understand how devils work. That's right. You don't want to believe that there's a spirit world out there operating against the spirit of Christ. Amen. Right. That's right. So you want to just forget about that and act like they're just lying about it. No, I don't think they're lying about nope. it. Just like I don't think they're lying when statues weep. Yep. I don't think they're lying about that either. Now, sure, there's probably some people that embellish things a lot, but I'm telling you, I don't think these people are lying. Right. I think they're telling you the truth. And yeah. if you ask anybody that was mixed up in the occult or had devil possession or astral projected or anything like that, they will tell you, no, they weren't lying. That stuff really happens. Yep. Right. Yep. You know why God's sending people here that got saved out of that? Because we actually believe the Bible. Amen. Right. We actually Amen. believe that. That's right. Amen. Right. And the average fundy Baptist pastor is too scared to talk about it because right. people think that he's a Pentecostal or he's a charismatic right. or that he's weird right. or that he, you know, that's going to make people uncomfortable. Little blue haired ladies are going to get uncomfortable at church. <laughs> Not against little blue haired ladies either. No. I just want you to know that. Good night. I'm just telling you <laughs> that they're worried about that. Why? Well, because their church isn't fighting the Antichrist. That's why. Right. They're not right. fighting anything. They're not warring against Amen. anything. Right. Okay, so that was his first miracle. Pope Urban the Eighth said that Benedict merited, <laughs> while still in his mortal life, to see God himself oh. and in God all that is below him. That's wow. wicked. All of this is unscriptural nonsense, and anyone that exalts St. Benedict as an example of the continuation of true apostolic signs and wonders is spiritually deluded. Right? Yep. Next, we have Gregory the Great, oh, good. AD 590 to 604, yep. was the first of the proper popes. Yep. And with, his, with him begins the development of the absolute papacy. He solidified this unscriptural and blasphemous office, 
which claims to be the head of all churches of the world. It was Gregory who established the papal states upon the dying carcass of the old Roman Empire, right. replacing secular Rome with ecclesiastical Rome right. and hastening the Christianization of paganism. Right? Yep. Which is why so many today practice Christmas and all these other holidays that are that are not scriptural. Right. right. Yep. They practice them because it's been passed down and it's become traditions. Yep. People just do it. They don't even know what the what the history of them are and where nope. they come from. They don't care. They have their feelings. It's fun. Leave me alone. That's right. <laughs> let me have my fun. Yeah, that's right. Yep. I don't care about the truth. Just let me have my fun. Amen. Amen. Then there's Blessed John of Parma. Blessed. <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's what they call him. 1209 to 1289. It is said that he spoke in tongues and says an angel once served the mass to him. Uh-oh. Oh, wow. Boy. Oh, boy. Now, how do I translate that? What does that exactly mean? A devil came gave him a little Eucharist cookie. and gave him a wafer. Yeah. Gave him a wafer. <laughs> Sick. Do you really believe that could happen? Yes. Yeah. I wonder if it was the angel Mora. Yeah. Could have been. The Bible says try the spirits. And we see some of that demonic activity with these tongue speakers, the same exact stuff. How about the Catholic Encyclopedia says Francis saw a vision of the seraph angels and received this stigmata. Or oh, visible wounds wicked. of Jesus that's in his own wicked. body. Wow. He said he so saw the seraphim. So and, he sa- and, and, and he had the visible wounds <laughs> of Jesus in his own body. Many stories are told in Catholic literature of Francis' strange relationship with animals. Oh. Oh boy. <laughs> On one occasion, he, he pleaded with the people of a village to feed a wolf that had ravished their sheep, calling him Brother Wolf. I agree. He was your brother. <laughs> Hey, let me wow. tell you something. Anytime a Catholic priest tells you that a wolf is his brother, you always believe him. <laughs> always believe him. Because it is. <laughs> that sounds like the original. Right? No, you can't make this up, can you? And the best part about it is, it's their own works. Yep. It's what they admit to. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yep. That's right. So yep. what was that brother the wolf brother doing? Yeah, the wolf boys. That's right. Yep. That's the legend of Rome. That's Romulus right. We talked about that. Wow. What was the uh, what was the wolf doing? Uh, brother Wolf was ravishing the sheep. Interesting. Well, that's what they do. Oh. <laughs> Keep feeding him the sheep. <laughs> yeah. And what, what what was he trying to tell him to do? Keep feeding him. So he keeps. Doing Wait a minute. So this wolf is like terrorizing the sheep, and you want him to keep feeding? Wow, that is a sign. Amen. That's right. <laughs> a sign to get away from you. Yep. <laughs> On another occasion, he preached to his little brethren, the birds. <laughs> wow. That is so... <laughs> wow. Now, we could go on to Rome and the spirit of Babylon, the cage of every foul bird, right? Of every uh, bird and you know, every unclean spirit. Yeah. Right? And he says that his brother is a bird. Well... You go off that. You just study that yourself. You'll understand what that. He had a brother as a, a wolf and a brother that was a bird. Makes sense, doesn't it? Makes perfect. Makes perfect sense. Right. <laughs> Francis received the blessing of Pope Innocent III, the brutal founder of the Inquisition. Oh. Now the Franciscans and the Dominicans were appointed by one of Innocent's successors, Pope Gregory the Ninth, in twelve twenty seven to twelve forty one, to head up the Inquisition. <laughs> With papal authority to destroy, he says Bible-believing Christians, but basically, yeah, Baptists. Yeah. Um, wow. With papal authority to destroy Bible-believing Christians wherever they were found. The they did a good job of it for half a millennium, yep. developing a massive spy network. Yep. All citizens from about age 14 and older throughout Catholic territories were sworn as spies of the Inquisition. See something, say something. Right. Wow. It's not new. Right. It's not new. The SS, what was it modeled after? Jesuits. Germany's SS, the Jesuits, right? What was Amer- America's spy network modeled after? Uh-oh. Nazis. 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 Right. <laughs> right? That's right. What? Where did it come from? Same spirit. Right. You know, um, didn't somebody say the two keys, aren't they on the... the aren't they... They're on the flag, right, for the um, Homeland Security? Yeah. But isn't also Homeland Security has, 
like a key on there, I believe, or something like that. And uh, one, one man said the studies of Jesuit says that or the, the, the sign that's on there is the same exact as Peter, the, the temporal yeah. power and the spiritual power right. is right there. That's what that means, yeah. Right. So anyway, that's just that speculation, but I mean, that's what he said. Uh, anyway, so they murdered people, and capturing and imprisoning and impoverishing and torturing and burning men and women whose only crime was refusing to bow to the Pope's false doctrine. Right. Why am I bringing this guy up? Because they spoke in tongues. Right. They were the ones that practiced those gifts. Anthony of Padua preached before Pope Gregory the Ninth in 1227, and those in attendance from other parts of the world supposedly heard him in their own language. Bernard Bresson studies in ecstasy is alleged event, even if it happened, which is doubtful, would have been a miracle of hearing in contrast to the biblical miracle of speaking. Right. Saint Dominic, 1170 to 1221, was the founder of the Dominican Order of Preachers, and his group was at the very cutting edge of the brutal Inquisition. One of the objectives D Dominic set for his order was the extinction of heresy. Wow. The unscriptural and blasphemous devotion of the rosary has been attributed to Dominic. Practice of the rosary involves saying prayers to Mary that can be addressed legitimately to Almighty God alone. The Dominicans wreaked havoc upon the Albigenses and the Waldenses yep. and the Anabaptists yep. and the Lawlerts and anyone else that refused to submit to the Pope. The bloodthirst of the Dominicans earned for them the stigma of... Domini Canes, or the Lord's Dogs. Yep. Wow. Right. A History of the Baptists. You can find that in uh, Thomas Armitage's book. It was the Domin I covered that also in a Baptist Battle for Liberty. You can go back and listen to that too as well. Uh, it was the Dominicans who were at the forefront of the attempt to stop the translation of the Bible. Yep. Into common languages. For example, the Dominicans headquartered at the Black Friars Monastery in London, so named because of the black robes worn by the Dominican Friars, called the Synod against Bible translator John Wycliffe in England and made every attempt to stop Wycliffe's preaching and translation work. Failing in this, countless copies of Wycliffe's scriptures were confiscated and burned, and hundreds of those who read them were likewise burned. Wow. These are all the ones that are practicing these yes. gifts. Wycliffe burned with them long. St. Vincent Fur, alleged uh, in 1350, 1419, allegedly had a vision of Christ in 1388 with St. Dominic and St. Francis and was commissioned to preach penance. He traveled and preached the Roman Catholic sacramental gospel. His biographies claimed he was endowed with the gift of tongues. He persecuted and tortured Jews to force their conversion to Catholicism. Wow. Now we come to St. Catherine of Siena. 1347 to 1380, started having mystical experiences when she was only six. Wow. Seeing guardian angels as clearly as the people they protected. During the summer of 1370, she received a series of special manifestations of divine mysteries, which culminated in a prolonged trance, a kind of mystical death in which she had a vision of hell, purgatory, and heaven. Does anybody know where purgatory is in the King James Bible? It Nowhere. It doesn't exist. So what's this vision then? What are these visions? From where? Devils. Lying spirits. Devils. That's where it comes from. Now, how do you know that, preacher? Well, because of this next part. You ready for this? She used, levi she used to levitate herself off the floor several times a day and speak in unknown tongues. Wow. There you go. It is actually said that when she wanted an early breakfast, the angel used to come and cook it for her. <laughs> wow. He made some good eggs. He made some great eggs. Bacon eggs. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and they ain't heavenly eggs either. They ain't he Hell's Kitchen. Being real. <laughs> That's right. That is Hell's Kitchen. That's right. All right. So listen, but who were they? These are the people that are practicing these gifts. Yeah. All through the, these right. are the documented people through the centuries that are practicing these gifts. Do they sound like Bible-believing, born-again Christians with the power of God in their life? With the working of the Holy Ghost? No. They sound like devil-possessed people. Yep. Kind of like charismatics. Right. right. Exactly. Right. Who are contrary to the Word of God and go off of their emotions, their feelings. That's right. 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 Amen. Okay, now we come to the, the height of the wicked devils, Ignatius of Loyola. Oh. He was co-founder, founder of the Jesuits, or the Society of Jesus. It was established on September 27, 
1540 by Pope Paul III with the papal bull Regimini Militantis, 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 excuse me, and was a major part of the Counter Reformation. Or was the Counter Reformation yeah. pretty much? Yeah, it was. Jesuits took a vow of complete submission to the Pope and to the superiors of their order. Let everyone persuade himself, he said, that he who lives under obedience should be moved and directed under divine providence by his superior, just as if he were a corpse, which allows itself to be moved and led in any direction. Right. That's what Ignatius believed. Right. The Jesuits plotted and openly succeeded in the violent yeah. overthrow of governments and the assassination of kings. They preached a gospel that adds the necessity of works and sacraments to the grace and blood of Christ. Loyola is buried in Jesu Church, the headquarters yeah. of the Jesuits in Rome. Right. And there is a massive monument to him on one side of the church. Now listen. Yep. On the lower right side of the monument is the marble statue, the triumph of the faith over heresy yep. by Pietro Le Gros. It depicts Mary violently casting Luther and John Huss out of heaven. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Imagine that. Listen, their names are engraved in the statue. Yep. A little winged angel to the side is gleefully tearing pages from a book. Anybody know what book that is? Yeah, the it's Bible. that Bible. There you go. Yep. There you go. Yeah. A little winged now, angel, too. Angel let, let's, see, let's see this now. What's the spirit? Antichrist. Right. Okay, so what do charismatics figuredly do when you bring them this word of God? They tear up the Bible. No, 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 no. That's yeah. same spirit. Yes, yeah. Same spirit. Yeah. On the lower right side of the monument is the marble statue of the triumph of the faith over heresy. A little winged angel is gleefully tearing pages from a book. With another book waiting its turn for destruction. Prophetic, huh? The books could be the writings of the reformers, or it could be the vernacular Bible translations, which were also condemned and burned by Rome. Yep. It was the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We know that. Right. Francis Xavier, 1506 to 1552, was another founder of the Jesuits. Xavier worked in India and Japan. Butler's Lies of the Saints alleges that Xavier miraculously spoke in the Indonesian and Tamil languages. But if he did, it was the gift of the devil since he was preaching a false gospel and was devoted to Mary. Yeah. Right. Right. Amen. Teresa of Avila, 1515-82, experienced visions and heard voices which caused her great anguish until St. Peter of Alacantara became her spiritual advisor in 1557 oh, no. and convinced her that they were authentic. Handler. She also used to levitate. And make mysterious noises down in her throat. Oh, that's wicked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like a uh, ventriloquist? What do you like, like a ventriloquist? Yeah, like, what are those mysterious voices? Well, those are peeps and mutters. Those are, yep. those are guttural. You mean wizards. there is like another voice? That's what, that's what guttural sounds, Brother Finney? Yeah. Making strange guttural sounds? Yeah, that's what a wizard Yeah, that's satanic. Crumbling. She also used to levitate and make mysterious noises down her throat. They did not call them tongues in her day. It was simply regarded as a manifestation of some kind of spiritual possession, possibly by an angel. Yeah, I agree. Wow. That's right, brother. That was in Pharaoh, the charismatic phenomenon in the church. Rome. Now, Alphanus Mary de Liguari. I think I said that right. It doesn't matter anyway. Experienced visions, ecstasies, made prophecies, that were later fulfilled and reportedly performed miracles. Her name was Mary. In her book, The Glories of Mary, exalts Mary even above Jesus Christ. Here's a sample. She said this, I am the queen of heaven and the mother of mercy. I am the joy of the just and the door through which sinners are brought to God. Oh there is no sinner on earth so accursed as to be deprived of my mercy. Bunch of devils. Wow. End quote. Hey, at least she admitted she's the queen of heaven. Yeah. Yeah. It is obvious that none of these Catholic mystics were controlled by the Holy Spirit. Who is the Spirit of Truth? For each was committed to Rome's false sacramental gospel and followed all sorts of other heresies, including the veneration of Rome's heretical Mary. In the cemetery of St. Medard in 1731, Roman Catholics in Paris, uh, they, went to the, they went to the cemetery of St. Madrid to the tomb of the Jansen, Jansenist Francos de Paris because of an alleged healing of a paralytic. So they were going, there. what are they doing? Grave sucking. Grave sucking. Yep. Wow. Oh, and you thought the charismatics started that, didn't you? You thought that was new with a bunch of charismatics, nope. right? 
you didn't think that that was already practiced by some other high-level witches yep. and sorcerers? Very old practice. Listen, people, let me explain something to you. When you keep a head of some saint or a toe of some saint and, 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 and you walk around with that thing and you pray to that thing, you are a devil-possessed person right. that is satanic to the core, Amen. and you've got and you've got the power of devils. Right, yeah. Okay? You love death, right? All right, come on, folks. This is not. This is what they do. The Vatican is full of this garbage. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I think he shut. He turned it down because of the next door, right? Yeah. Yep. That's okay. Yep. Um, others were supposedly healed, accompanied by convulsions. Some fell like epileptics. Others swallowed pebbles, glass, and even live coals. Wow. Wow. Women supposedly walked in the air. Wow. Like Beetlejuice. Like Beetlejuice? Like Mary yeah. Poppins. Like Mary Poppins? Yeah. Wow. See, for those of you that were involved in, involved in the occult, for those of you that were saved out of it, when I'm saying this to you, what does this sound like to you? Brother Nathan, when you hear things like this, you know where that comes from. You know what spirit that is. You already know what it is. Brother Joshua, you already know what that spirit is. Brother Nate, you already know. Brother Aaron, you already know what spirit that is. But it's the same spirit that practiced these gifts. Yep. Yep. This is the history of these perverted counterfeit gifts. This is the true history of it. So, so you are to have a desire to flee from these things. Right. And to expose them and to and That's to speak. Right. But instead of just there's too many people today that are just trying to dismiss that charismatic movement. It's all they're just no. getting excited. They think it, no, it's devils. Yep. Right. right. It's another spirit, another gospel. Let it be yeah. accursed. Right. right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Wicked. Here's a, so they walked on the air. One described the scene as groaning, singing, shrieking, whistling, declaiming, prophesying, caterwauling. What's a caterwauling? Wailing really loud. The Abbey of Beckerod hopped about on one leg, proclaiming that his other leg, which was 14 inches shorter, was growing. <laughs> hey, that's really a faith healer. Gift. Though it never appeared to be any longer. An eyewitness claimed that he had heard one of the women talking in an unknown tongue and understanding any language that was spoken to her. Yep. The Sevenal or Camisards of, of, or French prophets were, were some of the Huguenots or French Protestants in the early 1700s who reportedly spoke in tongues. They claimed to speak by direct inspiration of God from a trance state. Those so moved struck themselves with the hand. They fell on their backs. <coughs> fell backwards. Right. Fell backwards. Slain in the spirit. Right. What spirit? Antichrist. Right. It says here they fell on their backs. They shut their eyes. They heaved with the breast. They remained a while in trances and coming out of them with twitchings. They uttered all that came into their mouths. 1692 by Michael Hamilton, the Charismatic Movement. Wow. I've seen that. What they came out of, the trance, they had no memory of what they had spoken. Their experiences were accompanied by faintings, swoonings, at which times they seemed to be insensible to pain, and others were unable to stop them from their strange preaching. Even, oh, come on now. All right, this is wicked. Even babies allegedly prophesied. Another feature of this movement was the sudden ability of infants who could not yet speak to deliver discourses in perfect fluent French. Wow. Wow. Somebody found Well, listen to me. If you think that you can bring devils into your house and you can be a part of all this and it won't affect your children... And that spirit doesn't affect right. that and everything else. It's about time that God's people get a little bit sensitive to that, to those things and understand that we need to stay far away from that, those wicked things. Yeah. Yeah. Far yeah. away yeah. from them. Far away from rock music. That's far right. away from wicked Hollywood movies and yeah. all that other garbage out there. Yeah. Right. But you think, oh, I can raise kids in that and it won't affect yeah. their lives. Yeah. No, nope, you're fooled. Man, you're, you're, right. you're under delusion. Yeah. yeah. It's going to affect them. Is it does affect them. Good yeah. hurt. Wizard books, like we just talked about, a five-hour show of just not even getting through that whole book, but understanding that they're teaching children these things. These are not innocent little things. So do you believe these de- these babies were possessed? 
I don't know. Well, I suppose the Bible says children can be. But if you look in the Bible, children are possessed all over the Bible. Yeah. Yep. They were they were possessed. Right. Right? right. All the time. Right. Why do you think he said touch not the unclean thing? Don't bring right. don't bring those those things are a curse. Right. You think rock music's not a curse? You think Hollywood productions that are full of a bunch of sodomite loving wicked devils? Right. You think all those things aren't a curse? Right. You think charged objects that you bring in, little little dream catchers and things like that, you think none of that stuff why do you th- well remember the occult they work in symbols and signs and things like that's what that's how they work, that's how they communicate. Right. Yeah. You think that stuff doesn't affect? Oh, it's just fantasy. Really? Yep. It's not. All right, so some ladies of the ability of these infants who could not yet speak to deliver discourses in perfect fluent French. In 1701, for example, a child about 14 months old in a loud childish voice began exhorting to the works of repentance. Wow. Do you see where God ordained that anywhere in the scriptures like that? Yeah, the Bible says out of the out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. It's not talking about this. I'm talking about levitating, walking on air, and then having babies get up and speak. Right. By the way, that's from John uh, John, John Lacey, a cry from the desert, London, 1708. They recorded that. Most of the prophecies, by the way, were unfulfilled. And then we come to a man that's a very interesting character, Edward Irving. Heard about now the breach rivers are shaking a little bit. Edward, Edward Irving, 1792 to 1834, was the pastor of Regent Square Scottish Presbyterian Church in London, England, which was affiliated with the Church of Scotland. In 1830, there was a small outbreak of charismatic phenomena in Scotland. Mary Margaret McDaniel, McDonald, Mary Margaret, MMM, Mary Margaret McDonald had visions that Christ was soon coming. Yeah. Uh-oh. Millerites. You mean, you mean the eminent return? Eminency? Yeah. Eminency? The doctrine of eminency? Yeah, Mary Margaret had a vision that Christ was coming soon. Her brothers, James and George, began speaking in tongues. They claimed that the Lord was coming soon and that the end of the age would witness the restoration of all the gifts of the Spirit. Yep. Wow. Irving supported this movement and began teaching in his London church that members should seek the Holy Spirit and expect signs following, such as tongues and prophecies. When some women started speaking in tongues, Irving made a rule that there could only be tongues speaking during one of the weekly meetings, but not during the Sunday morning service. In true funny fashion. Just keep that, you know. Not on Sunday morning. <laughs> Any other time is cool. Any. Not Sunday morning. <laughs> oh boy. That's where I draw the line. That's where the line is drawn. Draw the line. Heresies every other day of the week, but Sunday morning is for the lost to be converted. The gospel is preached on Sunday morning. That's right. Show me that in the Bible. It covers the multitude of sins. Irving made that rule. Okay, soon two women claimed that they could not hold their tongues and ran out of the building. Wow. <laughs> That sounds like the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Can't take it! As so they ran like PJ around the building. Woohoo! Like PJ did down south, right, PJ? Right. So they just started running. <laughs> no laps. Oh, well, they ran out of the building. I'm out here. I can't hold my tongue. <laughs> yeah. He was What's that? Yeah, they, yep, they couldn't That's handle it. They're doing that in front of the church. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, at least they're trying to be doing things decently and in order. Yeah, they, they were attempting it, right? Going in By the way, they didn't notice that women don't speak in tongues in the Bible, but that's right. besides oh, the point. As long as they went outside, it's fine. When some women started speaking in tongues, Irving made the rule. Okay, soon two women claimed they could not hold their tongues and ran out of the building. Mary Campbell spoke out in tongues in spite of the pastor's rule. Oh, after that, Irving allowed tongues and interpretation in all services. Oh, he said, well, if the lady says it, forget it. You yeah, can't beat forget him. About Come it. on, let's all flap our tongues. <laughs> so wow. I guess that's what they, they thought was. Can't quench the spirit. Yeah, I can't quench the spirit. That's Don't what they say. Yeah. Church historian Philip Schaff gave the following description of, of the Irvingite tongues. Several years ago, I witnessed this phenomenon in an Irvingite congregation in New York. The words were broken, ejaculatory, and unintelligible but uttered in abnormal, startling, impressive sounds in a state of apparent unconsciousness and rapture, without any control over the tongue, 
which was seized as it were by a foreign power. A friend and colleague, Dr. Briggs, who witnessed it in 1879 in the principal Irvingite Church at London, received the same impression. That's history of the Christian Church, Pentecostal, and the Corinthian, Vassalia. Uh, recorded in some, in some reform with the, within the proceedings of the first meeting of the society. It goes on to give a really long reference. Little noticed, uh, let's see, okay, anyway, so that's, that's where they got the term. Irving was disciplined out of his church in Regent Square in April 1832, and he and about half of the former congregation founded the Catholic Apostolic Apostle, Church. Yep. Wow. Uh-oh. He attempted to restore all the gifts of the Spirit as well as the fivefold ministries. Remember that guy? Uh, Remember that guy on the street that told me you, you believe the fivefold ministries? Right. Wow. Now we know where that came from. And in November, at the year, year end, he ordained 12 apostles. <laughs> really women? <laughs> I don't know. I think Probably. some of them were, actually. It is important to note that there were no female apostles in the Bible. Right. <laughs> Except for the 13th. <laughs> <laughs> and there were no women ordained in the Bible. Either. Amen. Irving falsely prophesied the Jews would return to the land of Palestine and the millennium would begin in 1867. He also oh. prophesied he also prophesied the uh, eminent return or the eminency of the rapture. All right, and that's where the do- the doctrine and this is David Cloud didn't put this in his information. Of course, of course, but, <laughs> of course he did. I like David Cloud. I like his writings. He has some good ones. Um, but he, he didn't put that <laughs> in there. Yeah, he conveniently yeah. kind of left that one out. Right. It's not too comfortable to talk about that talking, eminency. Yeah was a doctrine that was popularized by who? Irving. The Irvingites. Influenced Darby. McDonald and influenced Darby. Yep. influenced Darby. Darby read his writings. And Darby, and if you read the history of fundamentalism, which I have at home, by the way, which I intend to fully do Amen. sometime, I have it all highlighted, oh, and I've just be been great. waiting to do this. If you understand the history of that movement, you will understand that Darby caused a great disturbance in the premillennial camps. Right. Yeah. So, and nobody wants to talk about. I find it fascinating that I that God dropped that book on me like ten years ago, yep. and I just put it in my library. And then one day I was just like, "Oh, the history of fundamentalism. Well, oh, that's kind of neat." So I opened it up and I started reading. And I started. I was like, "Whoa, this is crazy!" And I'm highlighting all this stuff. I'm like, "He is giving factual information, records from the actual meetings that they were a part of," and Darby. Caused the stir of eminency yep. in those. He split the split premillennial the yep. camp. Split the he split right it there. right down the middle because there were dispensationalists. By the way, and brother Finney, if you want it for your research, I'll get you that book. I, I might actually have another copy of it. I got to dig through a bunch of books that I have, but I might have an extra one. But I think you're going to want this this book. It's called the History of Premillennialism. That's what it's called, actually. I don't know. I don't remember, but I, I I'll, I'll get it to you um, and and let you know. But in that book, he documents. What went on? He documents and he gets into these guys, you know, all this Mary McDonald, all this other stuff. But he, what he gets into is Darby and Darby's influence on the premillennials. I know this is going to come to shock to some of you, but there were dispensationalists before Darby. Yeah, right. Of course it was. All right. But that's a lot of guys don't like to talk about that. They think that's, oh, you're hybrid. No, there's not. There were dispensationalists before Darby. Yeah. They rightly divided the word of truth. They understood that God worked differently. Right. They understood that. And they were there before Darby. And Darby split that group down the middle, and the eminency guys went with Darby, and the other one stayed to a historical position yeah. of premillennialism, which was what? Post-tribulation. Post-tribulation. Yep. Right. All right? That was just a free little tidbit to give you. I know you're getting hungry. That's okay. No. Lots of friends. Yeah. So many friends. Okay, but I got to keep going. I know I'm going long here. Irving falsely prophesied. Okay, we talked about that. Irving believed in divine healing and rejected all medical help. But three of his four children died young, and at least one of them could have been helped with the medicine of the day. In 1884, Irving returned to Scotland. It was prophesied that he would be a great prophet and convert the masses. But he died that year at the age of 42 of consumption. His failure to accept medical care probably resulted in his premature death. The Irvingite de- de- denomination still exists and claims 8 million members in 1994. What? Yep. The Shakers were the next group that practiced these gifts. Oh, the Shakers came out of the British Quaker movement yep. in about 1746. So At name. first, they were called the Shaking Quakers. So oh, that's a name. Shaking Quakers. Shaking Quakers. Their name came from their shaking, whir- whirling, 
Yep. Uh -oh. Ah, the Sufis, right? Whirling. And other vigorous actions whereby they attempted to rid themselves of evil. Right. Oh. By the way, you understand that when you do ceremonial witchcraft like that, when you're you're not you're not getting rid of evil, you're conjuring it up. You're That's right. More, you're getting more you're getting evil, more okay? Devils. God never told you make a circle and pray in it. Right. Right. Uh oh. They, they were shaking it off. They were trying to shake off the devils, but they're actually conjuring them up. That's right. I get a kick out of people, Christians, Baptists, that don't want to believe this stuff. But the funny thing about it is, is rock musicians will totally admit this stuff to you. That, oh, yeah, we do ghostwriting all the time. Right. What's up yeah. about? We do mad amounts of drugs. We go into state uh, tran uh, state of, uh, of trances, you know, we get into a trance. Yeah. And then we get messages. Michael Landon said it. Yep. Old Paul Ingalls said it. Old Paul. Paul Ingalls. He said it, didn't he? Not Paul, but he did. He said he said that he did it. He said that's how he got it. He wrote his father gave him everything. Oh yeah. Wow. The ghost of his yeah the devil. Anyway, one of the shake. The first leader was James Wardley. Wardley, sorry, who taught that the members could commune with the dead. Oh. Well, that's. That's totally Christian. Right? <laughs> yeah, man. It's a movement you want to be a part of, right? One of the Shakers was a woman named Ann Lee, who began to be called Mother Ann. Oh, boy. <laughs> by the congregation and was accepted as their leader in 1772. Oh, yep. Always downhill from here. Her writings were called Mother's Wisdom. <laughs> oh, man. That is creepy. Yeah, that's what. I'm sorry, but it's really creepy. I like Mother she, Goose. Yeah, Mother Goose is a witch. Yep, she is. She, she claimed by revelation that she was the female aspect of God's nature. The Shekinah. Oh, man. The Shekinah. Uh-oh. Nice. Divine feminine. Uh-oh. And that she was the second coming of Christ. Wow. wow. She's going to have to fight that one, that one, uh, that Sun Young Moon guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? He gave money to Liberty University. Right? He said yeah. he was the coming. He was, said he was. Well, I thought Who he was also friends with Tim LaHaye. Yeah. Well, we don't need to talk about that. Uh-oh. Okay, she claimed that God is not a trinity, but is a duality, duality, male and female. Wow. Baphomet. Oh, wicked. Wow. She taught that marriage is not as spiritual as celibacy, and when married couples join the group, they were required to live celibately. <laughs> Who would agree to that? Who would just look guys. at her and be like, shut up, you witch? Right. <laughs> Forbidding to marry. Forbidding to marry. Doctor of the devil. Yep. I would stand outside of the. I would literally stand outside of them and preach hey, outside man. of there, right? And call her a witch, just hey, like right. I did Ellen G. White. Ellen G. White. Have you read Ellen? <laughs> the Great Controversy. The Great. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> she. Why do they all say it like that? Too? She. She thought that the millennium began in 1747. She claimed she could speak in 72 languages supernaturally. Wow! Wow! Hey, that's like the Kabbalah, the 72 names. Of there you go. Oh. That's right. The early Shakers would sing in tongues while dancing. They even published hymns composed of unintelligible and unheard of words. In 1774, the small band of Shakers traveled from England to America and settled near Albany, New York. Albany? Yeah. New York! I grew up there was in a Shaker Albany. settlement in Massachusetts. There you go. Albany. New York, though, right? Wow. We talked about that time period oh, yeah. in New York, right? With Vinny like and the, all those other like guys. The burnout region? Burnout yeah, oh, there you yeah. go. Wow. Uh oh. Albany. Oh, that it is Northwest. There you go. Oh, man. There you go. You have to put that down, Jacob. Yes, I will. The movement reached its peak in the mid 1800s with some 6,000 members in 19 communities. By 1992, there were only seven Shakers left. They were all shook up. They, they gave us a history. <laughs> no. Is that their theme song? I don't know if it is or not. The town, right. I grew up, the town I grew up in had monuments to Shakers. Wow, that's weird. Imagine that. Okay, so from there you have the holiness movement, which I'm not going to go into, the fire baptized holiness guys, and Dowie. Now, before I understood, oh, like, wicked. I know, John Dowie, he was settled in Illinois somewhere, I think. But before I understood how wicked that guy was, I didn't know, like, I, I would, like, sell books like that because I thought you just sell them people would be studying, you know, like, against that, and they would be, like, interested. And I didn't even think that this would be bad. But I was up at um, Northwestern. At the college up there, Northwestern Bookstore. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist it. I was, I was up there. I was up there, and they had this book sale of all these old books. 
And there was like a stack of them like this big. And they were, and they, they were John Dowie's books. And the history of that movement over in Illinois. And I was like, wow, okay, I'll buy it. They were, like a, they were selling them for like a quarter. I like, That's insane. I sold those for like hundreds of dollars. They were first print editions of all of his creepy, weird stuff that he was... And I didn't even... At that time, I wasn't studying that stuff, so I didn't understand. I was like, oh, he's just some heretic, whatever. I mean, just some guy that thought he could do stuff. I didn't realize what it was. I didn't right. know, because I wasn't studying any of that stuff or understood that at that point. I didn't get any of that. But I remember having his original books and where they settled in Illinois and their movement and everything else. And anyway, but... So from Dowie, then you have Charles Parham, the modern-day charismatic leader. Then you get into the modern charismatic movement. Yeah. And I'm not going to get into that because I really don't have time. I may do another, may, maybe something briefly on it down the road, but I don't think so. But let me finish just by saying this. There is a danger of overemphasizing these gifts and not rightly dividing the word truth. Right. right. That's the problem. The charismatics of the Pentecostal movement have a huge overemphasis on something that it is not even for this time. Right. Right. It is a satanic distraction from the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. We are never told to seek out those gifts of the Spirit and that all should do miracles or all speak in tongues. Miracles do not produce faith. They do not. Right. Multitudes witness Christ's mighty miracles, but only a few believe. Right. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Amen. Right. Right. Amen. Further, the Lord Jesus Christ, he rebuked the lust after miracles right, in yeah. the strongest terms. Right. And turn to Matthew chapter 12, please. They lusted, Jesus knew that they would lust after these gifts. Matthew chapter 12. Verse, verse number 38, 39. Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered, sign. we would see a sign from thee. <laughs> Give me a sign. But he answered and said to them, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there yeah. shall no sign be given to it. Amen. But the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Amen. Amen. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they repented of the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Goes on to explain that, that that they were an evil and adulterous generation. Yeah, right. We are we are not the believers not to lust after the miraculous. He is to walk humbly by faith, obediently serving while patiently waiting for the coming of Christ. Amen. 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 The Bible says, "For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for His Son from heaven." whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Amen. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after that sign. Right? right? The Bible says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The miracles that the believer needs to support his faith are found in the written word of God. Consider the following scripture. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. And and what does the Bible say about this? And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Amen. That's the signs that we need. They're Amen. recorded here. We don't need any other signs. Right. Or wonders. We need right. none other. Amen. No other. The Christian life is a walk of faith. Right. And faith is based upon the word of God rather than experience. Right, right. Doctrine. This doctrine and the warnings of Christ against lusting after miracles refute the Pentecostal and charismatic movements completely. Amen. These men concentrate on experience more than on faith. And it's dangerous. It leaves men dead in their trespasses and sins. They do not rightly divide the word of truth. They do not rightly divide what they are supposed to in understanding what, what those gifts, the purpose of those gifts, who they were given to, and the fact that they would cease. Paul describes his own Christian experience in many places. That, he had, that our life is the crucified life. Amen. It's, it's a life of sacrifice, not a life of looking for your best life now or looking for miraculous signs and wonders. Right. Right. Paul described his own Christian experience he said, in his epistles, and it too was nothing like the experiences described by charismatics right. today. 
Right. He testified that the sufferings of Christ abound in us. Amen. He told the Corinthians, We would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, in so much that we despaired even our life, even of life. When he listed his experiences to prove his apostleship, describing suffering rather than glory, care rather than lightheartedness. They want to be laughing in holy laughter and goofing around and all this other stuff. That isn't what God wants. It's a crucified life, a life of, of self-denial. Paul said, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths often. In off, uh, the Jews saved, t- uh, uh, let's see, at times he received 40 stripes, saved one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. But those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Yeah. They are the babes. These people that are out there, they are the babes. Or they're lost, and they are ignorant of the gifts of their per- and the purpose. Right. Not showboating it to everybody, yep. thinking that's what they were for. It's not what those gifts were given for. It's very dangerous, and you stay away from these people that believe these doctrines and hold to these. Because yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, when you have people that hold to these doctrines, they are holding to doctrines of devils, right. Right. and they are dangerous, yep. wicked. And I'm not going to pray with them. Right. No. Uh, listen. All these businesses up here, they got this flyer about Northfield praise. Yep. Northfield praise. To who? Satan? That's right. The right. world does yep. Northfield pray to. That's right. That's right. They hate all the gospel. Get together, it's 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 it it right. Right. All Like the Unitarian Church, like all yeah, these churches yeah. are going to just come together, yep. the Catholics, Northfield yeah. praise. Yeah. yeah. As long as Praise against there. the gospel. That's right. right. They hate it. Are you kidding me? Northfield praise. Right. Bunch of yeah. Yeah. Right? And then they have the audacity to use the verse, lift up thy voice. It's like a trumpet. (laughs) (laughs) Seriously, their theme is to lift up their voice like a trumpet. That's what they do with praise. Which they hate. Which all the the leaders of this this town wanted to push, told me quite openly, that they want to push me out of this town if they could. Push us out of this town. I want to. I want to, the banker told me I want to ride, drive you straight out of town. Right. To show my people their transgression. Yeah, how is that contextually accurate whatsoever? Well, it's not. But come on. <laughs> I mean, you didn't expect I didn't. accuracy, did you? I didn't any, expect any of the Bible. But verses. using that is right. The they use right. They couple and they're the co-pastor and they have a healing ministry. Oh, they're, trained they're a bunch of charismatics. South America. Bunch of charismatics. Makes sense. Really? Yeah. I'd like to know who that is. Huh? I'd like to know who that is. I'll send it to you later. That'd be great. Thank you. Um, anyway, uh, so you understand, but that's where that leads. That uses that ecumenical movement, that spirit. You don't pray with these people. I can't go pray with them. Right. How in the world can I pray with those people? Right. They're not even praying to the same God you right. are. That's right. right. Walk together except or the same spirit. Yeah. I pray for them all the time. Get saved. Yeah, I pray for them. Yep. But I ain't going to pray with them. That's right. I'm not going to come into agreement with them. Yeah. Right. There is no agreement with them. Amen. Only that we want them to be saved. That's right. We love their souls and we, we fear for the, the judgment of God coming upon them, but that's it. Yeah. I can't go pray with them. Of course, they didn't right. invite me anyway. So. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't think I got a letter on that. Yeah. Your, your prayers don't matter. <laughs> Field's favorite son did not get invited. Anyway, let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for your words. Thank you for the truth. Of thank you, Lord, that we have a Bible, that we have the Bible, the Word of God, that we can rightly divide the Word of truth. We can go in there, we can look and see what you said about the sign gifts, what you promised us that we would have. That, Lord, we're not being shortchanged like lying charismatics try to tell us that, well, you just haven't been filled with the Spirit yet. Lord, we don't, we don't have to.